Okay, so raise your hands if you're here because you want to learn more. Fantastic. Raise your hands because not only do you want to learn more, but you want to earn more. In fact, say hi. Hi. Brilliant. Okay. So, maybe you joined this industry or this business because you wanted to earn uh, a bit of money to top up your income. Maybe um, if you're looking online, you're a student and you just want to earn some money for your university fees and things like that. Possibly you join this business because you want to uh, earn, earn a serious income and make a fortune. People join this industry, this business for lots of different reasons, okay? But whatever that reason is, right now you might be here, but where you want to be is here. So you've achieved that extra income that you're looking for on university. You've achieved those extra pounds to, to, to buy that holiday or drive that car or achieve those financial goals that you have. You've earned that money to have that financial freedom and that lifestyle that you're looking for, okay? So if we call this A, and this over here is B, then how are you going to get from here to here, all right? The answer is, you need a vehicle. Well, we've chosen our vehicle, all right? And lots of other people have chosen their vehicle to get from where they are to where they want to be. Some people have opted for roller skates, all right? Some people have opted for a rocket. But what we've opted for is our fantastic shooting star called Oriflame, all right? This business is amazing and it can certainly get you from where you are to where you want to be, okay? But whatever vehicle you've decided what you're gonna to use to get from A to B is you've gotta remember you're still the person behind the wheel. So it doesn't matter how good that vehicle is, it's how good is the person that's driving the vehicle. You could have a Ferrari, but if you've never passed a driving test, you're not gonna get very far in that car. Does that make sense, guys, yes or no? Yeah, yeah. 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 good, okay. So what is personal <coughs> development? Anybody? What's personal development? Bettering yourself. Sorry? Bettering yourself. Bettering yourself, yeah, absolutely, anyone else? Learning, it certainly is, okay? And personal development are your driving lessons. Whether it's your theory or your practical, it's the skills that you need to not only learn how to drive your vehicle, but how to become a better driver, a better person, okay? So, I'm gonna stand over here because we've had some slides. These are areas that you might want to work on in personal development, all right? For each person it's different, each person's an individual. The first area I recommend is health and lifestyle because if we don't have our health, we don't have very much. You can't do anything if you don't feel like getting out of bed on a morning. You're not very productive if by dinner time you're wanting to go back to bed, okay? So work on our physical health. Wealth, money and finance. Um, uh, I'm sure someone will remind me, I can't think who it was, but somebody said, uh, it might be Zig Ziglar, who said, or Big Al, who said, I would rather cry in a Ferrari than a Volkswagen. Money doesn't buy you happiness, but I'd rather cry in a Ferrari than a Volkswagen. Yeah, absolutely, money doesn't buy you happiness, but it gives you choices. It makes it easier uh, for, for those you love and for yourself. Emotional management, beliefs and attitudes. The results of our outside world more often are produced by the way that we feel because our feelings create our actions and our actions create our results. So emotional management is very, very important. Okay? Social, people and relationship skills. Danny Johnson, absolutely fantastic, says, what is your product? Can anyone answer that question? What is your product, guys? You are not your product. What is it that we're, what is it that we're, that, that we, what's the word I'm looking for? Who, who is it? What is it that builds your business? Is it selling the product or helping people? Helping people. Helping people. People are your product. So don't spend hours studying what's inside this. Who cares? We know it works. 
It sells. People are buying it anyway, regardless of what's inside it. You don't need to know the chemical makeup of body lotion. People use body lotion. What you do need to know is what makes up each individual, what their personality is like, what their values are, how to find out what their values are, so that you can relate to that person. Because this business is built on relationships, and you're only going to build a bigger business with more people in it. So a fantastic quote is, use the business to grow people, not people to grow your business. Does that make sense, guys? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. good. Community, all right? You might want to, you might be involved in the church, you might be a, a charitable person, you might want to give. And, and the, law, uh, the law of reciprocation is you give and you will receive, okay? And spiritual, some people are more spiritual than others, but you may want to uh, study your spiritual side, okay? What will make you different to everybody else? What makes you connect with the universe? Do you feel connected with the universe or what the higher power, whatever you want to call it, okay? Some of you will be thinking, what a load of tosh, and some of you will be thinking, do you know what, I really get that, that's something I need to look into. So again, everybody is different. So these are areas that I recommend you look at working on, but what we're going to look at today is beliefs. Because beliefs are not truths. What do I mean by that? Beliefs are not truths. Well, not too long ago, I'm sure you all know, it's common knowledge, that the whole planet believed that the world was flat. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes. Is it flat? No. So there's an example of beliefs are not truths. Just because you believe something to be so, doesn't actually mean it is so. Okay? So, we're only born with two fears. Anybody know what they are? Anybody? Don't be afraid, shout out. Noise. Sorry? Noise. Yeah. Falling. falling. Absolutely. The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. Those are the only two fears that you're actually born with. So where does all the rest come from? Why are we afraid of other things? Well, it starts with significant others. People that you trust, people that you look up to, people that uh, you respect and admire, people that you're told are experts. And it starts at school. Well, it starts from the moment you're born. It starts with your parents and their beliefs and their philosophies, which came from their upbringing and their experiences. So they start to program that little computer in your head, telling you what's right and wrong, what you can do and what you can't do, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. And that's me. I'll point, I don't have a pointer. Where's a pen? That's me, five years old. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you went, oh, that makes me feel good. <laughs> because at five years old, we were playing in a playground and we were playing kiss catch. <laughs> all right? And all the girls ran that way away from me towards some other of the boys and stuff. So straight away I started thinking, oh, I'm ugly. Oh, people don't like me. Oh, why do they get all the fun and everyone runs away? And started building a self-image of girls don't like me. I also started getting the attitude that I wasn't very bright or very clever because I struggled with reading and writing and other things that other people tend to find really easy. And I started thinking, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I always wanted to have my own business as a cabinet maker. I always wanted to build furniture. I've always been into handcrafted things. And I thought, do you know what, I'll go and learn how to become a cabinet maker, I'll build furniture, uh, I'll sell it at really high prices because it's all handmade. At 16 years old, the only cabinet maker I could find was in Nottingham. I lived in uh, West Yorkshire, and the fear, because at school I'd not got much confidence, and the fear of living on my own at 16 years old, away from my family in a town I'd never been to and anything else, stopped me taking that road. So I downed my dreams, I downgraded my dreams from being a cabinet maker to being a bench joiner because I could get a job near me doing bench joinery. So I became a bench joiner. 
at work, they sent me out fitting aluminium windows. All right, so at college, I was studying bench joinery. When I went to the joiners, they sent me out to a school in Bradford fitting aluminium windows for 18 months. And I thought, this is not joinery. This is not what I joined up to do. This is wood butchery. So if I'm going to be a butcher and just be bracing and no finesse, I'll go join the engineers. That's the Marines, but it's just a picture, all right? So I thought, I'll go join the engineers. So I went to the Army Careers Office, said I want to blow up bridges, I want to dig trenches, I want to drive diggers, and all that sort of stuff. And they said, brilliant, how quick do you want to do that? I said, well, I hate the job I'm in. They said, well, if you register today for the Army, we can get you in the infantry, you do the same basic training as everybody else, six months training, but when you get to regiment, you can transfer and go to the engineers. I went, awesome. I said, what if I just went straight to the engineers? Oh no, that's about three years. They'll tell you about three years down that course. Do you want to stay three years at the work you're in? No, no, no. I went, right, okay. So I took the test, qualified for infantry, went and did all the basic training and everything else, walked up to the sergeant major. Sir, I was told I could transfer after getting, after getting to the regiment. Sir, get off the floor, stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he fell off his chair, literally laughing at me. He says, son, you're here for the next three years, whether you like it or not. That day, I learned not to believe anything I was told in the army until it actually happened. <laughs> All right? But you can imagine how my heart sunk. I'd been misled into believing that I could transfer and do something I wanted. And from that day on, I never saw a piece of wood again in my life to actually work with. Okay, that's how my life started to change. That's how the goals started to change. Also, during the army, this is labeling, guys. This is how powerful a single label can be. What kind of labels? People that say I'm dyslexic, that's a label I wear. People that say I'm no good. People that say um, I'm a mum, that's what I am. No, that's what you do, it's not who you are. Okay? People that say, I'm just a nurse, or I'm just a cleaner, or I'm just a taxi <coughs> driver, or I'm a banker. Those are labels. Those are not who you are. That is what you do. You understand the difference, guys, yes or no? Yeah. yeah? So, one of the labels I was given while in the army, I'm on sentry one night, stood with a corporal that I didn't get very well on with very well. I sat there at the desk having a chat, and he turns around and he goes, do you know what, Ryder? There's three kinds of people in life. There's leaders, there's followers, and there's victims. You just happen to be the latter. That label, simple conversation, stuck with me from about 20 years old to 27, no, probably about 30, when I got into personal development in Clean Easy. And I went to Danny Johnson, and I realized that I'd been labeled. And I wore that label, and I said, it's not my fault, woe is me. What can I do about it? I'm just one of those kind of people that shit happens to. Yeah? Have you heard other people like that? Because we get labelled, and that was my self-identity, who I thought I was. And that happened in the army at 20 odd years old. So not all these labels happen when you're children. They can also happen when you're older, through personal experience. That's me, practising my phone calls in Bosnia. <laughs> all right, gaining rehearsals for, for my future in network marketing that I didn't know were going to happen. All right. So. Then I became a driving instructor. So I came out of the army, wondered what I wanted to do, became a driving instructor. Love teaching, love working with people. I've always been a hands-on kind of person. But at running a business, I was no good at. I was £30,000 in debt and needed to earn some money. And that's how I came across network marketing. Okay, responding to an advert to earn some extra cash because my driving school were failing. But on, through all those experiences, I started to pick up some of these baggage labels. Some of you may recognize some, some may have them yourselves, maybe. Okay? But things like, I can't do it. All right? How many times have you said, or heard yourself say, or other people say, I can't? I can't do that. I can't. Change it to, I can't do it yet. It completely changes the entire statement. I'm not worthy. I must be perfect. So many people think that they have to be perfect and they're just setting themselves up to fail every single time because nobody and nothing is perfect. I must not make a mistake. I'm not good enough. Nobody loves me. 
And that's what it all boils down to when we're afraid and scared that something will go wrong. There's two things. It's either I'm not good enough or nobody will love me. I may as well be dead. Is what it boils down to when you, like, why do you have a job? I have a job because I need to earn money. Why do you need to earn money? Well, because if I didn't earn money, I won't be able to pay for food in the house and one for another. So what if you can't pay for the food in the house? Well, then what's it about? Well, what do you mean what's it about? Well, if I can't pay for food in the house and that, I can't provide for my wife and kids and everything else. So what if you can't provide? Well, that's what I'm here for. Well, what do you mean that's what you're here for? Well, if I don't provide for my wife and kids and everyone else, what's the point? I may as well be dead. And that's what it boils down to. So there's something that drives you that ends with, well, if I don't, I may as well be dead. And that's your driver. Okay? It might not be wife and kids, it might be something else, but there's something that drives you that powerful. So beliefs, guys. What are beliefs? Well, let me try and give it, or where do they come from? How can we change them? Beliefs, let's imagine that your belief of I'm not good enough, I'm not saying your belief, my belief of when I was, I'm not good enough. All right? Imagine that belief is a tabletop. Okay? Now that table top, for it to stay up, for it to be supported, has to have references. There has to be something there that supports that belief and makes it true to you. All right? So imagine those statements or those references are the table legs. Such as the initial belief, I can't do this, I'm not good enough. That actually is the belief I had when I first saw Rob Foster speak on a stage and I thought, I can't do this, I can't do what he does. Many people might see someone at the front of a room and go, I can't do that. And that was the belief. Okay? The reference was, my teachers said I would never amount to anything. Which they did. They, they always said, you know, you're going to be a plumber, a joiner, a brickie. And they put me in a box and labelled me. That's all that I'd ever be able to do. Right? The other references was, I'm always last to be picked. No one must like me. <clears throat> Whenever I played sports at school or anything like that, I wasn't one of the first to be picked on the team. I wasn't left there with the other person thinking, am I going to be the last one or the second to last one? Right? Which thing wasn't great for your self-esteem and self-confidence. I failed my first attempt at running a business. The first time I tried running a driving school or a business, it crashed. It got me into £30 a debt. Not because I wasn't making any money at it, because I didn't know what to do with the money I was making. Because I didn't have that training or that experience. Why would anyone want to listen to me? I'm just Kev. I'm Kev. Struggle with reading and writing. Wasn't very popular at school. Thought I were un ugly. You know, teachers didn't think I amount to much. Why would anyone want to listen to anything I have to say? And those are genuine beliefs that I had, or feelings, references. So what do you do? <coughs> well, when you say nobody, such as things like, uh, why would anyone want to listen to me? Try and find references where somebody did listen to you. Try and find references where somebody has said something good about you. Try and find references where you weren't picked last, where actually you were quite, you were one of the first to be chosen or selected, or other achievements that you've accomplished. Look for alternative references, and that sometimes is enough to change the belief in itself. Okay? So, I started looking for different references. I've learned a lot and achieved a lot since then. So what do the teachers know? I'm not that kid over at school. Look at all the things I've achieved in life. You know, I, I, I passed out of the army, I qualified, I was selected to be NCO in one way or another. Um, I've got a fantastic family, there's things that I've achieved. I've built a business, I've created a turnover. We've done all sorts prior to Becky. These are things that I've done, talking about myself, okay? To give me my self-confidence, okay? I have loads of friends and acquaintances, just look how many people say hi and shake your hand and comment and, and say hello. These people wouldn't do it if they didn't like you. I also failed my driving test, but I didn't give up. I passed the second time and I also passed the being in the army, okay? So I'm certainly not a quitter. That's a quality to draw on. 
And every time I speak, I get good feedback, compliments from somebody. I'm not here to help everybody. I'm not here to impress everybody or anything like that. I just want to help anybody who's willing to listen that, that I can make a difference to. If I help one person see something from a different angle or a different point of view that then changes their life or changes their attitude or changes their actions, that's success as far as I'm concerned. I just want to help one person in the crowd. And if it's more than that, that's a bonus. So I can do this, and I will. Changing complete belief. So what beliefs do you have about yourself that's holding you back? What are the references that support that belief? And where can you find different references to kick those legs from under that table? To me, there's different kinds of personal development. There's light and there's heavy. Okay. What's the light stuff? Well, we recommend if you don't do any personal development at all at the moment, start on the light stuff. Start with the books, the CDs, things like what to say when you talk to yourself. We are coming down in the car today, Mandy said something and Jill replied, you don't want to be saying that because that's what you're telling yourself. Okay? That's just because Jill's read the books. Mandy hasn't at this stage, she's only just joined with us. And, and coming here today is fantastic personal development. It's learning new skills. It's the start of that development. We all started somewhere. Most of us had never even heard of personal development until we joined network marketing. I know I hadn't. Okay? Uh, George Clayson, Richest Man in Babylon. Brilliant book. If you find it hard to read, because it's a bit biblical <coughs> speak, so if you find it hard to read, get the audio on Audible. It's brilliant to listen to. I love that book. Financial management. What to do with your money. And this goes back to biblical times. These rules, these lessons about money have been going on since biblical times. So why aren't they teaching us in school? Because surely you go to school to get a job to earn money. You don't go to or work for somebody else. All right? But the whole point is it's to earn money so that you can live the life that you want to live. We don't work to live. Uh, sorry, we don't live to work. We work to live. Okay? So if you can learn what to do with that money so you don't have to work as long, amazing. Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, absolute brilliant CD set about doing things in bite-sized chunks, day-to-day -day activity. The Deep or Heavy Stuff, Danny Johnson, weekend seminar with Danny Johnson. If she's in the UK, book it guys, it's worth it. It's about 250 quid I think, something like that. It's one of the best investments you'll ever make. Da uh, Alan Pease. Uh, Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins is an absolute inspiration to me, um, I love his work, I love his material, um, just absolutely brilliant, I've got his CD sets and it's listening to those on a daily basis in the car that started to really make a difference to me, because one day I'm listening to all this stuff, it didn't make sense, I, I sort of got it, but then one day I'm sat in the house and I was listening to um, a meditation CD and just while I was having some time on my own, everything seemed to fall into place and it was like somebody had turned a dial on a safe. So I click, click left, click, click right, click, 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 click and all of a sudden the jaw opened and it just went ching, 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 ching and all the experiences, a lot of the experiences of my life, a lot of the reading of personal <coughs> development all just seemed to fall into place and it was like a light bulb went on and the doors opened for me and I knew what I needed to do and I knew I could do it. And that was the thing. And that's why it's not just network marketing now, I'm, I'm involved in property investing, I look at other businesses and stuff like that. And that would never have been possible if it wasn't for personal development. You hear people talk about different income streams, multiple income streams. I've talked about that for years, but to me, having a job and building a good, successful network marketing business is a great place to start. Once you've got your business up and running, don't try and ride more than one horse at a time, in my opinion, it's only my opinion, but you can't focus on two jobs of the same type, even though I recommend having multiple income streams. So, you know, it's that. It's personal development that's allowed us to do that. Oh, that hasn't worked. Never mind. So basically, be, do, have. That's what mo most people think. 
that if you do something, you get the results and then you become the person. So for imagine, for, for example, imagine Richard Branson. If you did what he did, opened up a record store <coughs> and then uh, opened up a train service and an airplane, uh, airport and all that sort of stuff, then eventually you'd have the things that he has and you'd be like Richard Branson. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. The first thing is the B is your inside world. You've got to change the inside world. You've got to be like Richard Branson before you have what Richard Branson has. So you've got to change your inside world to change the results on your outside world. Because when you are like that person, or when you're like the person you want to be, you'll do the things that that person does. <coughs> and then you'll have the things that that person has. So it all starts with your values, attitudes, beliefs, emotions and feelings. It's your feelings that create your actions. And it's your actions that create your results. Does that make sense, guys? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So, it's not what you do. That's me, 27 year old, just starting network marketing, smoking things I'm not supposed to smoke, doing things I'm not supposed to do. All right, I'm not ashamed of it because I won't be who I am today without it, but it's not something I advocate or recommend. But it's not what you do, but it's who you become that's important, okay? So that's a very important lesson to learn, guys. It's not what you do, but who you become. Successful in business and a fantastic family to boot, all right? I wouldn't have had those things remaining the person I was at 27 year old. So if you want to change your world, start by changing who you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So, I would just like to share a gift with you all. What I'd like you to do is just sit in your chairs, if you don't mind, please just relax, both feet on the ground, hands on your thighs. Just sit back and take some deep breaths, okay? As you breathe in, just breathe out, and with each outward breath, allow your body to relax further and further. And if you want, you can close your eyes now. And as you close your eyes, focusing on each in and out breath, as you breathe out, allow your feet to soften, feel them on the floor, allow your thighs, your legs, and everything to soften and relax deeper. And as you breathe out, with each outward breath, you are relaxing deeper, and deeper into comfort and joy. And just allow your face to soften, your shoulders to relax. Maybe let your chin go down if you want to. And just feel the energy and the tension flowing out of your body, through your feet and into the ground. And while you sit there in comfort and softness, I want you to imagine now that you stood in front of a home, the home of your choice, it's your home, it's familiar, it's comfortable, it's safe. I want you to walk across the road towards that home, noticing that the door is slightly ajar and the warm lights are on inside. And you place your hand on the door handle and you can see it in front of you. I want you to step into that person who's got their hand on the handle. I don't want you to see this from a distance. Step into the person and see through their eyes as you see your hand in front of you, open the door. The warm, the smell, the sounds of a home, a loving home, wash over your body as you walk down into the house through a corridor and you're walking down with the soft carpet under your feet and you hear the giggles, the laughs, of a happy child, baby child, a baby. Too young to talk, but happy and giggling. You feel the rush of warm love flow over your skin, through your body, as you recognize the giggle, but you don't know who it is. You feel familiar, you feel safe, you feel comfortable, and imagine the feeling of love. Imagine that feeling of when you love somebody rushing over you, somebody loving you. If you can't, imagine how it must feel. And imagine that feeling washing over your body as you heal, hear this child giggling at the end of a corridor. As you look down this corridor, you see a door. You hear the sounds coming from behind the door. You walk towards it feeling warm, 
feeling safe, feeling happy, feeling loved. Open the door and in front of you, sat in the middle of this carpet, is a baby. With its back to you, you can't see, you don't recognise it, but you have that feeling of connection. You know it somehow. You're familiar. Walk towards that child and with the love and affection of any good parent, I want you to lift that child up into your arms. Still can't see it. And I want you to hold it tight. And while you're holding it tight, I want you to feel the protection of being a parent. I want you to hold that child tight to your chest. Hold it tight. And I want you to smother it with love. And as you're feeling that love, I want you to increase that feeling. Allow it to flow throughout your body. Flow between you and the child that you're holding. Hold it tight. Hold it close. And while you're holding that child, keep feeling that feeling of love and emotion and strength. And look down into that child's eyes. And as you look into that child's eyes, you know it's you. And just hold it tight, hold it close and surround it with the love that you've never felt before. Okay, just overwhelm it and come back into the room. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Well done, Kev.